Hey folks, this is the first Elephant Live. I hope it's working. I have my ethical coffee from the cup to help wake me up. My name is Waylon Lewis and I am the founder uh, of elephantjournal.com. We started off as a print magazine, which I don't have with me, um, but we've been around for 14 years since I was young and we have um, some, somewhere close to 30 staff all over the world um, and we're based here in Boulder, Colorado. So I do a weekly video series on YouTube and now we're going to be doing some of this Facebook stuff. Um, so this is our first Facebook Live, so excuse me if I have no idea where to look or what I'm doing. But basically I'm going to start by talking about um, slow media. So if you have questions on that, thank you, Jay, I like you. Um, and, uh, and then I'm gonna also talk about a mindful lesson that applies equally to relationships in um, love or friendships as well as to work. So that mindful lesson is something I've learned the hard way and hopefully from me you can help, um, you can learn the easy way without messing up too much. Um, I'm the one who messes up all the time and then passes on hopefully how not to do that. So I was raised in the Buddhist tradition. Um, I uh, have sat many, many meditation retreats for hundreds and millions of very excruciatingly boring hours. Uh, they're kind of fun, but they're also really hard because your, your mind uh, kind of consumes itself until it has nothing left to eat until you finally relax. Um, and I've studied Buddhism a lot. None of that makes me an expert, but what it does make me is grateful that I had that as a reference point. Um, so that's where I'm coming from, sort of from a Buddhist point of view, not a Buddhist point of view, like I'm gonna go up to a mountaintop and be uh, some wise guru, but um, a Buddhist point of view of how does this apply to everyday life? How can we be of benefit to others? So I clearly need to be on our Facebook page so I can see your questions. Um, thank you, Yagneswar Vamsi, where are you? Maybe say where you are, say your name and where you are, that would be awesome. All right, so I'm not seeing any of the questions. Oh, I just saw one from Mary. Um, I don't know how to see all the comments. It's so confusing. All right, let me just read some of these comments so I'm not ignoring you. Gracie, hey, uh, Gracie asks, do I think big age difference relationships work? Uh, well, you're asking the right guy. Um, all right, uh, thanks everyone for your comments. So. It is a little hard to see these comments on the phone. They're not showing up on my laptop, but we're gonna focus. So the first thing I wanna talk about is what I call slow media. So we've all, and ask your questions and I'll get to all of them, um, or at least the ones that I feel like could be helpful to all of us. Um, and if you just wanna say something fun to the group or to myself, go for it. So slow media, so we know about slow food maybe. Slow food was a movement that started in Italy when a McDonald's moved into a main square in, I believe in Rome, it might have been Florence. And um, there's also uh, what I call slow journalism. Um, there's other slow stuff. Slow money is a movement we've been involved in. So basically slow refers to doing something mindfully. So slow media, all of you are reading stuff online every day, um, or you're reading magazines, or you're checking your phone, your Facebook feed. Um, you're, uh, like myself, probably walking around with your phone, checking your phone while you're biking or driving, hopefully not too much. And that leads us to the point, which is how can we interact with media and our phones and our TVs and Netflix and all this um, in a way that contributes to our life instead of makes it speedier and more full and more aggressive. So a lot of us, um, when we blog or when we put our Facebook status up, we're just trying to get our opinion out there. We're trying to be right. And we're trying to get others to do what we want. Um, here's Bess, who is Hello, adjusting you. something. Hey. Hi. Um, and, you know, first of all, I would encourage, if you can really focus on having your interactions online be um, peaceful, uh, in that you're not just creating more disharmony or aggression, you're, um, you have your opinion, but you're open to others' opinions, and you can dialogue. Uh, Senator Mark Udall, who actually lost to a Tea Party Republican here in Colorado, 
Senator Mark Udall, who's been on our video series, this video series, um, really talks about the need to, um, for Americans particularly, to remember how to uh, be agreeable in disagreeing. We need to be able to not hate someone who has a different point of view. So if we can all bring that to our comments on Facebook, great. These are all the comments? Yeah. Cool. Um, I need a sheet of paper or something so I can block out sure. seeing myself twice. Once is more than enough. Um, all right. I think we're good. We're learning. We're going to do this every Wednesday. Are you there? All right. I'm going to look at some comments. Sorry this is so chaotic, but it's our trial one. We're, we're building the airplane in the air. Do we target stories based on what we have clicked along the way? Um, yeah, so not really. I mean, on Facebook, Facebook unfortunately will show you the most popular stuff, which is often not our best stuff. Our best stuff we put in our newsletter, which you can get for free. We put a ton of time into it. It's like an online magazine. It's elephantjournal.com slash join dash the dash cause. Join the cause. Um, so if you want Elephant's Best Stuff, I would go there or just read our contest or latest. So contest is a way you can engage in, in slow media. The contest on elephantjournal.com's homepage is basically the weekly writers contest and we pay writers, which is important. Most writers don't get paid anymore. We pay writers who are consistent and sharing quality. So we're not just measuring them based on popularity, but on quality. And um, you guys are the ones who determine who gets paid. So if you read an article about, um, you know, breast cancer, or, um, you know, how to save elephants, or um, how to not use a coffee to go cup, um, and it changes your life in some way, how to recover from a, a abusive habitual pattern in relationships, and it helps you, then you can share that, like that, um, read it, obviously. Um, or comment and those are all factored into who wins the contest and then we pay them um, our hard-earned bucks and we don't have much money we're an independent company and yet we're spending thousands and thousands of dollars trying to support writers every month um, so you can help us do that by engaging in the contest that's one way you can do slow media I'm not trying to advertise but that is a way to reward quality writing which you know again often in this online world it's all kind of um, there's a lot of anger online uh, it's a pretty intense place. All right, let me look at some questions. Um, some very sweet comments. Thank you all for being patient. Um, Shauna Amato. And remember, try and say where you're from. Uh, that would be fun. Um, I'm from Boulder. Uh, what would we change if I knew then what I knew now? So I'm not sure if you're asking about relationships or about journalism. Um, in terms of elephant, I probably would have done exactly what I did, which is start a national magazine, start a magazine locally, then grow to regionally, really engage with the community. It was printed on eco paper, and then um, you know engage with a bunch of artists who did our covers, and then go nationally, which we finally did. Then learn the hard way that you can't really have a big national or international magazine that changes the world without um, compromising your eco integrity. Once you get huge, Magazines only sell seven out of ten on the newsstand, so they're really far from environmentally responsible. Um, so that's why we would then went online. The reason why I wouldn't have gone online sooner is because, you know, YouTube didn't exist, Facebook didn't exist, there was no, WordPress didn't exist. We're founded on WordPress, which is free. So you know, I didn't have any money, so I, I couldn't have transitioned online until I did, which was nine years ago. That's probably not what you're asking. You're probably asking what I've learned in my life that uh, I would change. I mean, the main thing is, as my parents' Buddhist teacher Trungpa said, meditate more. His answer to everything was meditate more. Um, meditation is not a means of escaping from the world, it's a means of taming your own self, like they talk about in Le Petit Prince, The Little Prince. If you can tame your own wonderfulness and tame your own neuroticness, and then just be open and be relaxed and have a sense of humor about yourself. Like I said on Instagram.com slash Elephant Journal recently, make fun of yourself at least once a day. If you haven't done it yet, get to it. Um, this Wi-Fi connection stuff is not working out. To have a sense of humor about yourself. All right, 
I'm gonna try and answer a few more questions. What do I think about polygamy? Uh, well, spirit collective. I have no experience with polygamy. Um, from a Buddhist point of view, we don't have a big moral issue with things unless they're harming others. So that would be my main comment. Like if it works, power to you. If it is causing more chaos and pain for people, then maybe try and work with it so it doesn't. Uh, and then maybe drop it if it continues to. But we have great articles uh, on Elephant about polygamy. You can search elephantjournal.com's polygamy. Is meditation hard to learn or teach yourself from Shannon Cunningham? Uh, thank you. So yes, meditation is hard. It's also incredibly simple. So it's simple in the sense that we could all do it right now. Take a very good posture, you know, extend your spine up, breathe deeply, and then relax into it. That's the basic meditation posture with your eyes open, not closed. Eyes closed meditation, that's fine, but the particular Buddhist meditation practice we do, eyes open, it's called shamatha. Then you rest your attention on your breath, in and out. And then the second you find yourself thinking about something, busy, what we call monkey mind, then you can just say, ah, oh, I'm thinking, and bring your attention back to your breath. So quietly to yourself, you say thinking, bring your attention back to your breath. What you're doing there is you're training yourself to come back again and again from your discursive thoughts. Your discursive thoughts take you out of the present moment. I always love to say that the present moment is where the brilliance happens, where love happens, where anything delicious food happens. You can eat a delicious eclair. I remember when I was a little kid, I was in uh, Estes Park at that famous hotel that The Shining was modeled on. And they rolled out this tray of desserts, including eclair. And I, my mom and I didn't have much money. It was the first time I'd ever had an eclair. And it was like, I mean, eclairs are ridiculous. They're just like heaven in a, they're not too good for you, but they're really good. And, um, you know, I was so present with that eclair. It seemed to last for like two hours. And it was the funnest moment of my life. I still remember it. And I'm 41 now. Um, every single bite of food we ever have could be that good. We just have to be present with it. If it's bad food you know, then you'll very quickly realize that you don't want to be present with that bad food. So like if it's greasy or overly sugary, like maybe eclairs or whatever, um, we realize that we, we take that intense fast food stuff to break through our discursiveness. So we focus, oh, this hamburger is super salty and it's good or greasy. But we don't actually need that salty, greasy stuff if we can be present with, say, a salad and then suddenly it's not so boring. All right, sound like my mom. Yeah, I want an eclair too. I'm vegan now, so I need a vegan eclair. All right. Um, how did my parents teach me meditation mindfulness without forcing it on you? From Orla Palmer. Um, number one, there's a thing called Shambhala Sun Summer Camp, which was a summer camp. You play a captured flag, you do this, you do that, but it's not full of entertainment. Entertainment from a Buddhist point of view is ego or speedy mind trying to, you know how like if your friend goes to the bathroom, I mean, yeah, in a restaurant, we immediately get out our phone. Um, so we can entertain ourselves. So we don't have a moment of space or a moment of insecurity or a moment of looking alone. Instead, just relax and, and experience that gap. So next time you're walking, don't get your phone out. Next time you're driving and you're at a stoplight, don't get your phone out. Instead, look out at your world. There's this great quote by Trungpa Rinpoche, who was the teacher of Pema Children, who many of you might know. And Trungpa Rinpoche said, look, this is your world. Celebrate it. And I love that notion. So my parents didn't really force me to meditate. I did some, we do chants, which are like hymns in the Christian church. Um, we, and chants are kind of fun for kids because they're sort of like singing. We did some meditation. Um, and my mom would probably like try and bribe me a little bit. Um, but it didn't really work. Meditation, you can't, the great thing about meditation is you can't fake, I mean, you can fake it, you can sit there, but nothing will happen. And that's not bad, um, but you really have, I remember the first Dotton I did, which is a month long meditation. I was 17 and I just tried to survive it. It was painful. I just tried to like make up entire basketball games in my head, going back and forth or count the cars. There was this highway, it was in Vermont. There was this highway in front of me, really far away, and I would count the cars going each direction. I just tried to get through the month without going crazy. And ironically, that is more crazy. The next Dachshund I did, I had had my heart broken a bit in college and I was 
desperate to meditate and connect with these Buddhist teachings. I really appreciated them. And it was so easy. The month just kind of, was, it didn't fly by. It was just fun. Um, and, you know, everyone falls in love with each other, not in a romantic way necessarily, but people are connecting on this kind of deep level. All right. Um, Patty Schlavon. Hello. Uh, how to make a decision using meditation. Well, meditation is a great way to pare down your fear and your hope. From a Buddhist point of view, hope is also a problem. You know, like Obama had all the hope posters. Hope is almost always going to end up in disappointment because it's based on this sort of like, everything will be perfect. But really, you just need to be non-theistic about it and relax. And if you're in the present moment, you don't need hope and you don't need fear. You're just present and available and awake to whatever's happening. It's like when you're bicycling or skiing, you're not hoping. You're looking at the trees or you're looking at the bike lane and you're just present. So the main thing, Patty, is if you can make um, decisions based out of the present moment instead of out of hope and fear, uh, meditation can certainly help that. But when you're meditating, you're not thinking about the decision particularly, you're just doing the practice. And then when you wake up, I mean, you get up, you, um, uh, you know, maybe you have a fresh perspective. I also, just for decisions, I really talk with mentors all the time. Really reach out to friends, reach out to mentors. All right. Uh, any tips for anyone stuck in a rut depression from past trauma when they feel meditation is very scary for them? Um, that's from Paulina Holden. So meditation is, is difficult. Often people will say, oh, meditation is making me worse. Uh, it's not actually, it's just you're looking for the first time. It's like opening up that closet, you've been throwing all your stuff in for a year and you're like, oh my God, this is, so you're actually just looking at your mind. And it can feel worse at first, but just stay with it. Uh, for depression, obviously, that's a serious thing um, that you may need to consult with a therapist or doctor about. In the Buddhist tradition, there are uh, meditation instructors. So if you go to your local Shambhala Center, um, which is almost everywhere, S-H-A-M-B-H-A-L-A, -A -A, you can get a free med meditation instructor. I have one, Frank Berliner. And um, having someone to talk to about your life uh, without the sense of project, um, meaning even though you may have past difficult experiences, that's not defining you, um, that can be very helpful. So I would get a meditation instructor, instructor. I would, you know, the emergency kit from a mindful point of view for um, mild depression, I mean, you know, actual depression, you need to treat pretty seriously, maybe with a therapist or whatever, that's out of my um, purview. But, uh, you know, Get Pema Children's When Things Fall Apart, it's a beautiful book, it's very helpful, Oprah loves it, I love it. You get a Pema Children book and you get a Pema Children book. And then um, find a free meditation instructor at your local Shambhala Center or any other mindfulness organization um, I'm in the Shambhala community, so I know that, but you know, Zen or whatever your thing is, it can be Christian, it can be Catholic, it can be Islam, whatever your thing is, that's great. Uh, but find a, a mentor, a reference point. And then, you know, I have a blog about this on Elephant, uh, things to alleviate, I forget the title, but it's something about like uh, ways to solve, S-A-L-V-E, everyday depression. A big one of them is getting offline and getting outside, getting some sunshine. So just unplug, literally. All right. Um, how can you fight sleep when meditating? So ironically, the Buddha himself uh, addressed this. This is from Evie Drew. Hello. Um, coffee doesn't even help. Yeah, because coffee is kind of hyping us up. And when you meditate, you actually relax. And coffee and other things can actually just, you know, you just finally, your brain finally relaxes. And you go to sleep. So... Um, there's six obstacles and antidotes. I think we have an article on that on Elephant. Just refer you to that. Um, to, so six common obstacles to meditation. One of them is sleeping. So there's different techniques. Number one, you need to get enough sleep. Most of us don't. Um, most of us have our phones in bed or our laptops in bed or our TVs near our bed. Get that stuff out of your bed. Um, sleep in your bed. Don't sleep on your couch. And read before bed. Meditate before bed. You're about to have eight hours, hopefully, of uh, dreams. And, you know, if any of you go through insomnia, you need to separate electronics and um, bed by at least half an hour. Um, 
not out of some uptight thing, because that'll just help you not go to sleep, but out of some sense of uh, just allowing yourself to wind down. You know how you, and you start falling asleep when you're reading. That's a lot easier to do than when you're watching like the uh, 80th episode of uh, Silicon Valley uh, and you stay up till 3 a.m. and you ruin your next day. So number one, get enough sleep. Uh, number two, you can raise your gaze a little bit. Eyes open when you're meditating helps not fall asleep. Have a good posture. And if you do fall asleep, it's no big deal. Just wake yourself up. You can label that your thoughts about falling asleep, your frustration, whatever, and coming, come back to the breath. So labeling means you just say, ah, I'm thinking about wanting to meditate better. That's just the thought. And then you return your attention to the present moment. All right, so many questions. Wow, look, someone put that blog. Thanks, guys. 10 basic solves for burnout and everyday depression. I don't know if that's the blog I was thinking of. The one I was thinking of is, um, has a Walt Whitman image. Solves for depression. But anyway, that one's probably great. Um, so from Korean, Waylon, I just got laid off from my job. I'm in shock. Sorry, it's not funny. How do I get through this panic and move into action? So Kareen, this, you know, first of all, our heart all goes out to you. Everyone who's reading, like her comment and give her a little hug. Uh, Kareen, a lot of us go through this. Um, you know, I was fired from a job. Uh, um, I lost another job because it just wasn't a good fit. Um, I was broke 90% of the time until I was 35. I mean, number one, it can be, there's a huge silver lining here. So the number one thing to do when you've lost your job from a, from a heart point of view, not a practical point of view, from a heart point of view is like, really just breathe, go for some hikes, get outside, talk with friends, like make sure you don't kind of go into hiding. It's not gonna help to be Gollum in the caves, you know, uh, freaking out about this. It's, you're gonna wanna like connect with people network, get on LinkedIn, this is going into the practical stuff. Um, write some articles on, on Elephant, if you want, about this experience, and people might reach out to you. I know when I read an article about someone going through something like this um, on Reddit, you know, you see hundreds of people reach out to them. So know that you have value and you have worth and that you just weren't a fit for that job. And it's kind of like breaking up with a girlfriend or boyfriend, it's like, it happened, Time to move forward, time to move on and find something better. Maybe start your own thing. I mean, I can't tell you how many people have started your own thing after um, losing a job that wasn't a great fit anyway. And, uh, you know, I had no money when I started Elephant. Kickstarter didn't even exist. Now there's Kickstarter. If you have community, Corinne, you have nothing, um, nothing ultimately to fear. Fear will be a natural experience, but, um, you know, you can kickstart your idea. Uh, as long as it's gonna be helpful and valuable to others and you connect with it gen genuinely. You could start a craft and put it on Etsy. Um, and, you know, without knowing what your skills are, I can't say too much more. But thanks everyone for giving her some love. Um, oh good, I'm glad you thought that was funny. Uh, I, all I saw was you just got laid at first and it sounded good. All right, number one advice for writers just starting out. Number one, read. That's, I've written a blog about this, it's on elephantjournal.com, advice for writers, I don't know what it's called, but the number one thing is, I think it's like eight tips for writers. The number one thing is read, 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 and you'll learn how to use words and how to communicate. And then don't, you can copy, like I copied F. Scott Fitzgerald or Mark Twain or Hemingway or whomever when I was in high school, Kerouac, and then eventually you'll find your own voice. Um, so that would be my advice and read my blog if you want more. Any thought I ever have, I've probably blogged about. Comments are disappearing. That's a bummer. Um, someone said that. I find myself super busy in my mind when I have so much going on. With work, responsibilities, and exercising, if you only have time for one of those activities, do you choose meditation above all else? Yeah. So Reggie Ray, a great, fun Buddhist teacher, um, said, if you don't put meditation at the top of your to-do list, it won't get done, ever. Meditation, as my teacher, Sakyong Mipam, we have videos with him on youtube.com slash elephant journal. He says, meditation is training your mind and your heart. Like we all know that we need to take care of our bodies, hopefully, we need to take care of our bills, we need to take care of our relationships, but we don't really take care of our mind or heart. So yes, you do need to meditate even before anything. It doesn't have to be more important, you can do both. 
just two to five minutes of meditation when you first wake up. You know, get out of bed, have a little meditation spot. Dedicate your day to the benefit of all others, including yourself, to dogs, to grass, to the sky, to human beings, to yourself, to your family, to your loved ones, even to your enemies or people you don't care about. Um, that's actually a formal thing in Buddhism. You dedicate yourself to people you have no opinion about, which is ignorance. You dedicate yourself to people you dislike, which is aggression, and you dedicate yourself to people who you like or are attached to, which is craving. Um, you dedicate it to everybody. Uh, typically, we only dedicate ourselves to those we care about. And then meditate for even a couple minutes. That's very powerful, and all of us have time to do that. The average American spends two to three hours on Netflix or TV, and then we uh, don't have enough time to look someone in the eye and have a conversation. So two minutes, five minutes of meditation, and uh, really just practice. When you have a thought, label it thinking, return to the breath. All right, I hope this isn't getting boring. This is really intense with so many questions. Um, all right. I'll read a couple more. Where's the best, where's the best place to start with teaching children to meditate? We have a lot of children meditation articles on elephant. I would read those. There's a, from actual parrots. Um, I was a kid, so that's my limited authority on my experience with meditating. Um, yeah, we all love Pema. Um, how to integrate meditation in your daily routine during work. I've talked about this a lot in my YouTube videos, youtube.com slash elephant journal. Two best times to meditate are when you first wake up, you're about to set the tenor. You know that expression, you got out of bed on the wrong side of the bed or the, on the wrong foot or something. So get off, get out of bed on the right side of the bed, on the right foot by meditating for a couple minutes. Um, and then right before you go to bed. Because those two times, when you first wake up, you have a brief moment of clarity, then you have your iPhone, your to-do list, blah, 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 your children, whatever you have to do, it, it, things get chao chaotic fast. So right then, you can get out of bed or do it in bed, sit up, dedicate yourself to the benefit of all, that your life isn't just about you, and then follow your breath. All right, uh, sorry, I'm trying to read all these. Yes, meditation can help very much with depression. Uh, I don't think it's a solution. I think you have to face depression straight on, uh, but meditation can be a tool and can be helpful for sure. And it can nip it in the bud. Like we all have triggers that trigger us into, back into depression, habitual patterns. Meditation works directly with those habitual patterns, whether it's around food or, or uh, whatever it is. Yeah, we all know our habitual patterns. Raven. Um, I get caught up in my thoughts all the time. Uh, the number one thing I do when I get caught up in my thoughts is I get yelled at by my staff or my friends and they, they bring me back. But um, yeah, often meditation, when you're caught up in some crazy, we call it klesha in Buddhism, that's meditating right then isn't always the most helpful. Maybe go for a run, go for a hike, like get it out. Sometimes if you have a lot of energy and intensity, meditation right then isn't super helpful. But then maybe after you've got some energy out. You know, like those of you who own a dog, I have a dog, some, you can't really train him when he's going nuts. You have to kind of tire him out, and then when he's a little bit more receptive, then you can train him. I always say the only good dog is a tired dog. Talking about Redford Lewis on Instagram, he's, he's huge. All right, uh, how can I unleash my writing capabilities? I mean, I wouldn't worry too much about writing. I would worry more about reading and then at some point you'll have something you want to talk about and then you can just start writing. I mean, I honestly would blog on Elephant. There's a write button on the top of every page, elephantjournal.com slash write or slash submit, but there's a write button right at the top. Just practice and writing isn't about you and your great career. I, when I was young, I thought I would be this huge famous writer, but really it's more about, it's not about me, it's about connecting my experience and trying to be helpful to others. And if you do that, people will really react. I wrote my first book this year and I was only able to sell any copies and be, you know, somewhat successful in that because, um, you know, it wasn't just about me. It was my experience, but it was about something we all share, which is trying to fall in love in a genuine way um, with some sense of freedom and independence. All right. Uh, I can't keep up. can't do it. 
It's crazy. Um, how do you prepare your body and mind before doing meditation? I don't really, but like when you first wake up to meditate, it is good to go to the bathroom, you know, shower, do whatever, then meditate. I find if I meditate right when I wake up, I'm still half asleep and kind of out of it. It's not super helpful. In terms of the body, obviously doing some calisthenics or yoga or exercising every day. New York Times just did this article. If you're doing half an hour of exercise a day, it's the number one thing for your health. Obviously, in addition to eating real unpackaged food, um, like gardening. Then you can get your exercise and get real food. Uh, thank you to Aaron. Um, Yeah, guided meditations, there's all kinds of contemplative meditations, guided meditations, closed eyes meditations. I'm just talking about shamatha because it's sort of the most basic, fundamental, simple, and difficult meditation that we all can do. And there's a great article on Elephant about, um, by Trungpa Rinpoche himself about, um, it's called the Datun letter. Datun means month-long meditation, D-A-T-H-U-N letter. Um, and we'll put that in comments if someone's there. Um, yeah, Jay Ojeda, I find meditation, but I like meditation, but find it nearly impossible to master. That's why it works though. You keep trying. Yeah. My friend Yvette wrote about this in her book, The Declutter Code. Cool. So yeah, my uncle who was crazy, never meditated, even though he was brilliant and sweet because he just said it was impossible and he didn't have the patience or the time for it. That's exactly who it's for is meditation. Meditation isn't for that peaceful like guru on the mountaintop. It's not for your favorite irritating yoga teacher. It's for us. It's for us in everyday life. It's for you as a college student or a um, parent or anyone who's engaged in, you know, a workaholic. It's for all of us. All right. Uh, I haven't really talked much about slow media, so maybe I'll wrap up with that. Um, I haven't talked much about anything that was planned. These comments just are awesome and kind of took over. If I missed your comment, maybe you can copy and paste it to the top because I'm losing track. Um, so in terms of slow media, I would just really encourage people not to contribute to the noise, you know, like you see on Twitter or Facebook statuses. Really try and only say stuff when it's helpful, genuine, loving. Like I'm a big Bernie Sanders fan, but there's so much hatred from some Bernie Sanders fans for Hillary and stuff. And even if you feel like you're right, it's not, you're just adding more hatred to the world. Um, it's fine to criticize people, but you need to do so respectfully as if you know them, as if they're your cousin or your sister or your brother. So, um, you know, I'm critical of uh, Trump, Mr. Trump, but uh, hopefully I'm not a jerk toward him because there's enough jerkiness out there. All right, I'm gonna wrap up. Um, I'm being told to wrap up. People are sick of this. And uh, I guess the final thing is I didn't really talk about the whole title of everything, um, which is on Instagram. It says Instagram.com slash Elephant Journal. I wrote a week ago and I wrote an editor's letter about this. It says, be painfully clear early on. This is for love, for friendships, or for work. Be painfully clear early on and save five times the pain later. This applies to relationships in work and play equally. If someone isn't doing what you want or expect, it may be the fault of your assumptions and expectations and lack of communication, not theirs. So be brave, be clear. The number one issue I see with my staff um, in their communication is everyone's friendly and good at communicating, but when it comes to um, talking about something difficult or uncomfortable, they don't do it. And that's unfortunately, or fortunately, whatever, there's a lot of difficult, uncomfortable stuff um, that you have to talk about in order to have a functional workplace. And that applies to our friendships. Hey buddy, I, I feel like, you know, you've been drinking a little bit too much consistently. I don't have a problem, I'm not your daddy, about you drinking, that's your choice, but maybe it's been a bit too much. Do you wanna talk about it? Or hey, I see, You've been really quiet, you disappeared, I haven't seen you for weeks, I know you broke up with whoever, how are you doing, you know? Reach out and be brave. All right. Um, Dayanara Reese 
I'm sad I wasn't able to watch this whole thing. All of this will be on youtube.com slash Waylon H. Lewis or youtube.com slash Elephant Journal. It'll be recorded. I think it'll also be recorded here. Um, Sarah Krosky, I'm gonna, this will be the last question. What were some obstacles you had to overcome to get to where you are today with Elephant Journal and as, and or as a book writer? I think, you know, there's endless obstacles to being an entrepreneur and to being a writer and to being a human. I think you just generally have to be inspired. Like, why do you get up in the morning? And think about that. The answer for me is I want to be a bodhisattva or a great person. And the definition of Buddhism of a great person is someone who has made the difference to many people who has given back. And so far I've been largely, uh, in my mind, unsuccessful, and I, so I'm fired up to keep trying to do that. So that's what gets me up in the morning. I'm not sure if it's recording. Alrighty, I'm gonna bow out. Thank you so much, hope it's recording. We'll do this every Wednesday at MST 11, I don't know, anyway. It'll be on facebook.com slash elephant journal. Thank you, all of you. All right.